I want to get into something a little new. Radio communications. I don't know, it sounds a little boring. It sounds like, you know, radio communications, two guys on their CB radio, you know, fat, you know, you know uh, trucker guys talking about their monkey wrench. But really, we use radio communications more than you think. I mean, cell phones, cordless phones, uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, satellite communication for your satellite TV and your internet provider and, and cable TV. Wireless technology is all around us, and why shouldn't we explore it? I mean, there's a whole radio world out there that most people don't even know about because they were never, never made, the, the information was never made available. Now, um, I want to explain FRS radio. FRS, or Family Radio Services, I do believe in Europe it's called uh, PMR, Portable, Portable Mobile Radio, I could be wrong. Um, usually the radios can range from relatively cheap to really expensive. Now, uh, here's two radios I've got, okay? This is one's made by Motorola, and this is Maxis, uh, I don't know who makes it, uh, it's some no-name brand. This cost me about $50, this cost about $8. The difference between the two, this one has customizable, like, you know, call tones and Roger beeps, and this one doesn't. When it comes to FRS and, and, uh, and uh, the PRS, or whatever it's called in Europe, I forget the name, um, the output power is always the same. Uh, it's limited. So it doesn't matter how much you pay for a radio, you're always going to have the same output power. You just pay for more features. It's really not important. Now, I've got this radio over here. I think this one cost me, like, $12. It came in a pack of two, and it was, like, $25, including tax. Now... With an FRS radio, you can obviously communicate to other FRS radio users, but there are um, people we call jammers. And what a jammer does is kind of like an IRC noob or, you know, the, all they do is flame wars and denial of service attacks. All these jammers do is get on the radio, hold down the transmit button for hours at a time, like blasting music or cursing and screaming. Now, that's not all too fun. But, you know, when you finally do get two FRS radios, you know, why shouldn't you do more with it than what it's intended to? So I want to show you something called Slow Scan TV. Slow Scan TV, you basically, you use a computer, um, and you modulate um, an image. You basically take that image, you convert it into a, a modulated sound, carry it through the air to your other radio. So if the internet is down, whatever reason, or you have no power, or you have no way of communicating, and you need to send a picture, or a map, or an image to someone, FRS radio, laptop. It's all you really need. The, the setup is quite simple, okay? All you really need is an FRS radio and some kind of computer. Um, Windows, Mac, Linux, and there's slow scan TV applications for pretty much every operating system. This radio has a headphone jack and a microphone jack. Unfortunately, I lost the adapter for the microphone jack, so I can't show it to you. But um, basically, this is just plugged straight into my computer. No. No fuss, no muss, no real brain work here. Just the, the speaker is plugged into the microphone. So whatever this ra radio receives, it'll, it'll spit into the computer and the computer will process. And the speakers will plug into the microphone. So when the computer spits something out into the microphone, it'll transmit. That's another thing about FRS radios. A lot of the models, when you plug a headphone jack into the microphone, it'll automatically start transmitting. So if you have a problem with your radio constantly transmitting, you might want to think about putting a switch in line with the, um, the transmit, like a toggle or a push-button switch. Now, we'll go to the software side real quick, and I'll show you the quick setup of a slow-scan TV application. Over here, we have MMSS TV. Um, a really great free application. It looks kind of complicated. It looks kind of, you know, like there's a lot to it, but really, install it. Um, you'll have to set up a call sign because this is an amateur radio application. However, FRS uh, doesn't require call sign. Make something up. This over here is your spectrum equalizer. This is the actual what's coming into your audio right now. Now, if you want to send a picture, you go to your transmit. Now, of course, they have little templates and stuff that you can use. This one's just the default. You just right click. You know, you can paste an image or load it from a file. You know, play around with the options. But save that for another day. This is the receive window. You really just have to leave the receive mode to auto. The different modes are pretty much protocol. The further down the line you go, the more bandwidth you need. The more bandwidth you need, the longer the transmission is going to take, but the better quality of the picture. We're going to stick with Robot 36 for, the, for time's sake. Um, the one thing I suggest you really do is you go into the options, and you see the auto resync and auto slant. Make, those, make sure those are checked because it will automatically adjust the picture if it goes out of sync or out of slant. 
so you don't have to deal with it. If it does go out of sync, you'll actually get a sync profile, a grayscale sync profile here. You just hit this little button, it'll actually turn, it'll turn uh, like to a yellow smiley face. Just click that and it'll fix your picture. Okay, now I've got Bunny on the other end of the radio in my lab all set up for transmission, so I'm going to tell her to transmit us a picture. Okay, honey bunny, can you please uh, do a slow scan TV transmission? And notice how it instantly corrected itself when it got slanted, which is good. Now, while this is receiving, you know, you can, you can see the image coming by. It's not the best quality. It doesn't look the greatest, but again, I mean, it's a little bit better than a fax, or actually sometimes they get a lot better than a fax. And if you're in an emergency situation and you really need to go and like, get a map or a picture of someone and you don't have a camera phone, you don't have, you know, anything except just your computer and uh, an FRS radio, there you go. This is also another way of actually sending candid images and messages through through radio. I mean, it's it's pretty sly, it's pretty sneaky, and it's not very hard to set up. All you really need to do is pretty much hold the radio up to up to the speakers to your computer, and that's it. You can transmit. And to receive, you just hold the microphone up to the speaker. I mean, you really don't need an elaborate setup. It's pretty simple, and it can be pretty fun. I mean, a couple of uh, friends and I in the neighborhood will always will instead of um, you know, talking, we'll just go and send pictures and images to each other because, hey, it's just fun. This is one of the many, many, many things I plan on covering with uh, radio communications and amateur radio. Hopefully this sparked your interest, and if you have any questions or comments, check the show notes, check the forums, check IRC. I'll definitely be linking to the software, as well as another piece of software which I'm not going to cover today for time's sake called Radio TTY, which is much like the TTY terminals for the telephone system, but for radio. Hooks up in the same way, works in the same way, just as easy to use. So, have a good luck and have fun.